All right, so I'm getting snowed on, but I'm putting overhead power to a garage. So I'm basically going overhead and there are other videos. It's very rare, but there are other videos on YouTube about this. And I'm actually doing it the right way and getting it inspected by an electrical inspector. So I'll show you exactly how to do this or how I'm doing it and what code is. So I'm doing 240 volts, 50 amps going to the garage out here to a little sub panel with two spaces in it and this is called four wire ser and this can go inside or outside of the house i'm going to attach it to the side of the house it does not have to be in conduit and i can run anywhere i want from the main panel outside inside across the ceiling in the basement, whatever I want to do with this, I can run it wherever I want without it being in conduit. So this is fine. This is interior, exterior, UV resistant, moisture resistant, uh, you know, water resistant, all of it. SER is great. I'm using four wire because I'm going to a sub panel. So I need two hots and a neutral and a ground and I need to separate my neutrals and my grounds completely that is very important so I have four wire SER let me see what else we got here I have 2242 rubber splicing tape I have heat shrink tubing and then let me show you how I'm going to do my splices so these are just splicer reducers and they are rated for aluminum and copper and these are more than adequate for my wire gauge here the six you can get these at big box stores sometimes also i have a weather head on each side so where my ser comes up and joins to my my quadplex or commonly referred to as triplex the overhead wire i'm going to put a weather head on both sides now this particular wire is not meant for a weather head like this this is an seu weather head seu has three wires so i'm gonna have to improvise a little bit and make my four wires fit in this but i'd rather have this than a gooseneck gooseneck is where you would just bend your wire down at the top where it's connecting into your overhead wire you would just bend it down i don't know if you've seen it but it's kind of a gray area all right i'm three feet away from a door any windows anything like that doors and windows i need to be three feet away from with my ser see this this is my ser and it's just going to run up the side of the house like this i'm going to put clamps over it and then here is my quadplex see this overhead wire right here the one further away this is the pre-existing one that's closer to us and the one further away is my new wire let me go up here it's a little slippery. See, I started clamping it up here. And that right there, holding the triplex up, is a wedge connector. And I wish I had more slack on my triplex. I really do, but that'll work. And I have this 12 feet from the grade, so 12 feet high. And then I have it 12 feet high over there. That's my minimum distance I have to be. I'm going to put a weather head on that SCR and then I'm going to use those splicers and I'm going to heat shrink them and uh, tape them up kind of like this but uh, a lot newer. This SCR here is going to go into the house here and then it's going to go to the main panel and uh, I'm just for now, I'm just hooking it to a 40 amp breaker, but I can hook it to a 50 amp breaker if I want. Garage over here. What I'm gonna do is pop out with my SER up there, connect, I'm gonna put the weather head on it, and then I'm gonna put my splicers in, connect, and I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna install my sub panel right here, and my SER will be coming down and feeding it. It's so cold out, I'm trying to get feeling back in my hands. This is my portable little ghetto heater here. Alright, so I've got my SCR ran on the outside of the house to the point of connection to the quadplex. 
I'm going to enter in right down here to the left of the garden hose. Now originally, I messed up. I was going to enter right here. Luckily, I found a nasty old piece of siding and glued it on there. But I realized that that was a mistake. If you know why, let me know in the comments. Well, I'm cutting my cable with my circ saw today because I forgot my ratcheting cable cutters. Go figure. The circ saw works good on the bigger cable. The aluminum cuts it real clean. Super, super, super critical when using aluminum wire. No locks, antioxidant joint compound. This goes on every connection, inside, outside, every splice, everything. I'm going to grease the living shit out of all my wires with this. The aluminum ones before I put them in. And just for extra credit, I always put them on my bus bars too, right where my breakers stab on, because why not? In the holes here, everywhere, everywhere. Overkill it with the no locks. That way your wiring doesn't start any fires. All right, no locks or antioxidant compound specifically formulated for aluminum. I'm sure there are other brands out there. This is what I grab from big box stores. Cranking these con connections down here. And what I'm gonna do is get them as tight as I can. And then I'm gonna come back again in a few minutes and retighten them. Now the advantage here is it's super cold. Right now I can see my breath. It's super cold in here. So the aluminum has already shrunk to this about the smallest it's going to get inside that connection now as it gets warmer out it's just going to expand 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 so my connections because i'm doing them in the cold are always going to be tighter than as if i were doing them in a, on a hot day but aluminum has a tendency to expand and contract a lot that's why they outlawed the smaller gauge aluminum wiring in houses. So there, there used to be 12 and 14 gauge aluminum, non-metallic shielded wire, you know, your typical Romex style that would run to all your circuits in your houses and white sheathing with green writing on there. And uh, if you do encounter that in your house or somebody's house that you're working on, you just wanna make sure all the connections are tight and greased. Be sure to let them know that it's dangerous, but as long as all you have no locks on all your connections, it should be all right. Now, price-wise, this stuff really isn't that bad. Less than a dollar a foot for my six gauge SER wire. Less than a dollar a foot for my triplex out here. And my breaker box was 21 bucks. My breakers were $20 a piece because they are tandems. So we got two and one here. This box is rated for tandems. It's rated for up to four circuits. It has two spaces. This isn't as bad as most people would think. Don't buy your wire at the big box stores. They you literally. It's like almost eight bucks a foot probably for this wire here, this SCR that is a dollar a foot at my electric supply here. Green Mountain Electric Supply, that's where I go. They're local, they're close, there is cheaper places, but figured I'd tell you the prices here. CR is ran on the inside of the garage. I'm popping out right outside, going up for like 12 inches into my weather head. I have a clamp around six inches, less than six inches away from the box. That's important. And then I got it clamped like every two feet or so. I'm going to have to plate this stud, I bet, because I drilled through this stud and I was a little shallow. So I'll put a plate on there. I got to bring one with me tomorrow just in case. I got the tandems in. I have to bring a ground bar. Yeah, back tomorrow. Here it is outside on the garage. And you can barely see. We're about to lose the light, but you can see my SCR. Coming up, my weather head and how I'm connected. Rubber insulating tape, linerless, uh, 2242 to be exact. That's how, that's what I wrap those in. I marked my neutral. Here's my glass insulator up top with the wedge connector. And then my ground is going 
to the bare aluminum on the triplex, or I mean the quadplex. And then I'm going all the way across three feet from both of those windows. I'm a little over 12 feet up on the side of the house from the ground. Here's my SER. It's coming out here. I got clamps every two feet about. And then here's my weather head. I gotta adjust this, these drip loops. They're kind of wonky looking. So I'm gonna get up there on the ladder and fix that. Tighten things up, get a little tighter. Better looking, I gotta push my ground down a little more too. But yeah, there it is. Both sides. Here's a quick look at the inside. I'm sorry I didn't have the cover off, but that's a double 40 breaker I installed. My neutral and my ground on the inside are connected to the same bar. It doesn't matter on the main panel. Here it is going outside, running across the joists, just tacked to the bottom. And here's a look at the final result in the garage. I have my ground and my neutral separate bars. I installed a separate bar completely for my ground. There's my SCR going up and out. It's clamped about six inches away from the box and about every two feet after that. Hey, thank you. If you made it this far, thank you for watching the whole video. I hope you got something out of it. If you have anything, put it in the comments. Any suggestions, any codes that you know of, anything that happens in your jurisdiction. I'm going to have the inspector come this week. I'm going to talk to him tomorrow. I'll send him a text. His name's Pat. He's really cool. He's got a mullet, rides a motorcycle. Not in the cold, of course, but I known him for years and really developed a relationship with him i'm going to ask him if i can record him and i'll post it and especially if there are any violations anything like that i already went through the entire thing my whole plan with him exactly how high i was what wire i was using and he okayed everything from over the phone so we'll see how it goes in person i suspect it'll be all right he's going to check the pre-existing grounding that is unrelated to the job. So the, the pre-existing grounding in the main panel, he always checks that in every house. If it's not grounded adequately, he makes me ground it, even though it has nothing to do with my job in particular going out to the garage. And he also checks to see if there is a hardwired smoke and carbon dioxide detector in the basement. Those are a couple things I made sure were up to par. I put in a, a, a hardwired smoke and carbon dioxide detector too before I left. I, I threw that in for him. With a 10-year sealed battery, that's very important for me to pass inspection. Once again, thank you for tuning in. Check out my other videos. You stay frosty. Don't do anything Jesus wouldn't do, and I will see you on the next one.